we've been adding various products and um, categories and tags and we talked about coupons now it's uh, time to get a little more complex where we talk about variations now at the moment we've got cakes pies and cookies I want to talk about cookies in that this is gonna rely on variations I'm not gonna sell one cookie at a time I'm gonna sell them in batches I'm gonna sell them maybe a dozen at a time maybe six at a time maybe you know two dozen at a time I'm not gonna sell one at a time I need to sell them in, in batches these are this is gonna be a prime case for variations uh, so the general idea is one way you can think about it is again shirts so I'm gonna sell red shirts and so I need uh, large medium and small but they're all part of the same thing they're a shirt it's either large medium or small and all three of those can have the same price or different prices they can be very detailed so I want to deal with cookies and we already know that we're going to add a product but before we add to the add the product I would say we're going to, need to create the variations first and then we'll add the variations to the product so let's go to variations variations allow you to create options for products for example if you're selling t-shirts you will have a size option sizes will be the variant variation name you will then create variants which are small medium and large which will have the variation set of size once you have made your set you can use the table on the right to manage you will be able to order your variations by dragging and dropping them so we've got some keywords here we've got variation or variation set which is the big way to organize and then we've got variants which are the individual things so the variation set for example is size I've got t-shirts and they can be specified with sizes so size or sizes is my variation set and then the actual variants inside of that are small medium large so there's several ways that we can do this the example gives us a good way to think about it that what is the what is the option that we can attach to the product t-shirt makes sense size well what if I'm selling men's or women's t-shirts so I can have a t-shirt male female version and then sizes and all of this detail so for for cookies I'm selling them in groups of 6 12 or 24 don't do this but here's a possible way that we could do this we could do this as cookie batch again don't do this but here's a possible way to organize it I'm gonna sell cookies and then there'll be a little box that says cookie batch select 6 12 or 24 that'll work and that'll make sense but the problem here is that this variation set will only apply to cookies I'll have to create another variation set what if I'm selling cupcakes in groups of 6 12 or 24 I'd have to create a brand new variation set called cupcake batch so perhaps a more generic term would be simply batch I can attach batch to cookies and to cupcakes and anything I want to sell in groups of 6, 12, or 24. So let's think about it in that terms, in those terms, because that's what the example here is saying. You're going to sell t-shirts and the big variation set is size. That can apply to small, medium, and large t-shirts pants I guess sweatpants uh, sweaters small medium and large so one mistake that people often make here is to literally make a variation called like what is the one thing you're trying to sell if it makes sense make it a sort of like a generic idea to to select well we are about to create those actually but this is just to think for it doesn't know exactly what you want so that's why we have to create it ourselves well, I think it was just a, I don't know, 
I, I could see size of you know, fat, a fat and whatever other variations that are out there that are common variations. That's a good point. Then have a, an other that's a good point. Maybe, um, maybe, in the next version. maybe in the next version, or maybe we'll send them an email and say, why don't you do this? That's a good point. So we'll have to do it ourselves. We're, we're going to create a, a batch here. So we will select batch. Name is how it appears on your site. So this will be visible to people. There'll be a, a box, uh, and next to it, it'll say batch. <coughs> Just like when you're about to buy a t-shirt, and it says size, and then you get the drop-down menu. This is going to say batch plus a drop-down menu. Description, don't worry, let's just click um, Add New Variation, don't worry about anything else here. Just click Add New Variation. If you scroll back to the top, you will see, okay, we've got Batch. And a batch will include either 6, 12, or 24 cookies at a time. So now, we're back on Add New Variation parent, we have to select batch. We're now about to create the variance 6, 12, 24. So we'll see. We'll call it like this. Uh, one dozen. One possible batch is one dozen of these items, which could be one dozen cookies, one dozen cupcakes, one dozen lollipops. Now if we look at the very bottom before add new variation price, you can list the regular price, differential price, or even a percentage based price. Okay, what this is saying is we're gonna have a base price. 12 will cost how much? 24 will cost how much? 6 will cost how much? We can add it as a differential price as in the dozen costs $2 more than the basic price and we'll set the basic price on the actual product. We can set a percentage. A dozen will automatically cost 50% more than a basic, uh, <coughs> basic set. So let's say one dozen is going to cost $11. Again, this is the thing about you're going to save more by spending more. So if they see that it's going to cost a certain amount for, for six of them, but I'm going to save money if I buy the 12, I can entice with this sort of price here. Add new variation. So now a person from the batch will be able to select one dozen, which will cost $11. Let's add another one here. Add new variation. Make sure it still says parent batch. I'll say two dozen. I want to entice people to go for, go for the two dozen, so I'll do it again like this. Normally, instead of it being uh, $24, we're going to say $22. Look how much you're going to save. Add new variation. So it doesn't show us what we wrote here, unfortunately. It'll show it to us on a different screen. Um, we've got one dozen, two dozen, We'll do half dozen. Six. Six of these items. At six, that'll be regular price of, let's say, one dollar each. So I'll do six dollars. <coughs> when someone chooses the half dozen of whatever, it'll be six dollars. If they upgrade to the one dozen, it'll be eleven dollars. If they upgrade to the two dozen, it'll be twenty-two dollars. Yes? You thought the point of using bats was to make it generic? Mm -hmm. The word for pie, well, for, for cupcakes and cake and cookies? Yeah, this so is... Are making this price work for both of them? I'm not a good businessman. I'm better in the kitchen. 
but you have a good point. You have a good point. This is generic enough that it could be applied to multiple products. Does the price make sense for all products? Maybe not. But this is still setting up a structure that then I can apply per product and then customize it. Oh, you can change I can price still later. Mm -hmm. oh. I can still change it. So per price, when I select cupcakes, I'm gonna upgrade them by two dollars each. So this is just like a basic price. What's that? You're gonna have multiple you might have CPU speed, which has nothing to do with cookies, but you're, you're selling computers on the side. But you're saying that when you do the batch in your, in your product thing, mm -hmm. you, then you can overrule that. Yes. Numbers. Yes, right now these are going to be some base prices, which then I can overrule um, definitely when we, uh, when we get to that point, when we're actually editing the product. So that's why up here in the example it's saying size. That could be size of a t-shirt, size of a pant, size of a uh, sweater, and they can be changed on a case-by-case -case basis. Now let's make sure here that it says batch and that each of these has this dash in front of it. If it doesn't, that means you did not select first parent batch. If it still says new variation, each one of these will be a separate variation, which doesn't make sense. Variation set. Each of these down here with the dash is a variant. All of these three are part of this top one. We are going to add a new product. So from the left, select Add new products. The name of the product will be chocolate chip cookies. We'll put some, we'll put some description, soft and chewy. Uh, category, of course, cookies. Don't worry about featured image at the moment. Product pricing. I want to set at least a basic price because I, I've seen a bug once in a while. They fixed it, but it's happened once, so I might as well mention it so that we can we can uh, remember this. But sometimes it's possible, it, or it had been possible, for a person not to select any variation and still buy the product. I want to sell them in groups of 6, 12, and 24. At least once it happened that the person didn't select anything and still bought it. So well, how much would it cost? And if you set nothing, your product is going to be $0. You're going to buy it for nothing. That could be a big problem. So we're going to say at least the basic price. Uh, the minimum batch that I'm selling these is is half dozen six dollars. So I'll say at the very least you're going to be charged six dollars if you don't select anything. It should not let you proceed without <coughs> selecting anything. But if if that bug is present here, at least you'll charge them six dollars rather than zero dollars. Um, now we'll take advantage of this section here that says variations. Scroll down and on the left box do you see variations? Okay, so it says select the variation sets and then there are corresponding variants you want to add to this product. If you click the triangle to open batch, what I can do here is I'm gonna say this product is going to be sellable in one dozen and two dozen increments. Or this product is going to be sellable in all of these increments. Or only these two increments. I want to be able to sell cookies in one, two, and half batches. Half dozen batches. So I'm going to select all of them. Right? select them all or simply select the top and they all get selected because I could have a quarter batch which is how many cookies 
three. So let's click Generate Variations. <coughs> That'll then jump you to, we, ha we had a Setup tab and we had a Manage tab. This now is where we can go in to fine-tune this on a case-by-case -case basis. One dozen cookies, $11. Two dozen, $22. Half dozen of cookies, $6. If I had applied this variation of batch to cupcakes, then I can go in here and increase these. I can set SKUs on a case-by-case -case basis. I can set sale prices individually, stock individually, how much you're taxing. All of this default should be fine. To each one of these, I can further go in and add its own thumbnail. So I can have a different thumbnail for every single one of these if I wanted. I can add a description to every single one of these. I can go into edit and get very detailed. I'm not going to get too complex for the moment. I want to see what this looks like, then we'll play with it a bit more. But the only thing that I need to do here is make sure that under Manage, I have my variations. Save those variations. And then back up to the top, publish the product. To see the result, let's go back to Visit Site. We can open the shop and go directly to Cookies. Chocolate chip cookies, soft and chewy, product options, batch. Please select. Again, I'm not going to select it yet. Add to cart. See, it's not letting me go through. They have fixed the bug. But in an older version, if you didn't select anything, it might let you go through. Anyway, batch, I can select one, two, or half dozen. You notice before me selecting anything, before I select anything, it says price from $6. That was my base price that I put in, just in case. And then as I start to select, okay, this is going to be $6 for half, $11 for one dozen, $22 for two dozen. Now one thing that I see here, in theory, we could add various quantities of batches. So if I select one dozen, but I want two of them, that will give me the two dozen, and now I'm overpaying. So this quantity does not seem to be able to be removed from a case-by-case -case basis. You have to remove quantity completely from the store. So I added this to the cart, I get this pop-up, go to checkout, continue shopping. Oh, it still remembered I added the chocolate cake earlier. Because we have that option we added last week, where it said how long to keep stock. I think we kept it like a couple of days or something, so it still remembers I want to buy that chocolate cake. It shows I've got two of the one dozen chocolate <coughs> chips, which I can remove. Actually, I want three dozens. So is that product uh, that was uh, JPEG shown there? Is that, um, <coughs> is that from your... That's something you're bearing. That's from your... 
That one is from the product itself. Chocolate cake doesn't have variants. Oh, I probably didn't do Okay. Yeah, when you're editing your actual product, you're going to set your featured image. Yeah, maybe. And then it'll show up there. I didn't add a featured image to the chocolate chip cookie, so that's why that one's blank. All right, let's say, um, okay, we want to use vari variations a little bit more. I want to make, um, we don't have a category for this one. Um, no, well, let's stick with cookies for the moment. But let's say we're going to do a different kind of cookie. So at the very top, we will select Add New. We're going to add a new product. This brand, this new cookie that we're going to sell here is uh, Snickerdoodle, also known as a sugar cookie. I'm going to sell a Snickerdoodle. And let's say because these are harder to, to make or whatever, we're going to make them more expensive. We can still use the same variation set, but we'll see how we can make it different. Let's set your cookies category. Base price. Let's say we're going to sell these only in groups of uh, 12 and 24. And so my price for 12 was set to $11. These are going to be a little more expensive, so I'm going to set it for $12 as my base price. And then under the variations setup, this time I only want to select one dozen and two dozen. I'm not going to sell them in half dozen batches. generate variations one dozen two dozen and so the base price of one dozen will be twelve dollars and there will be a little discount we'll say twenty three dollars instead of twenty four dollars so we're just basically taking the concept of how can we sell these? What are the variations? What are the options to sell this item? And then we can uh, refine it. So I'll publish that. Visit site. This is not an update. We are creating a brand new product, Snickerdoodle. But if you did publish it first, then yes, you need to select Update Second. And now if we go back to the cookies screen, we should have a couple new cookies. Chocolate chip and snickerdoodle. And under batch, now this is saying from $6 for chocolate chip, from $11 for snickerdoodle, and I've only got one dozen and two dozen to choose from. Yes. Uh, you mentioned the dealer quantity. I uh, can't remember. Is that something you have to do in the code, or is that something you're going to? No, it's over here. Let's see. Back on the dashboard. Settings. Store. Presentation. Um, You'll find one called Add Quantity Field to Each Product. No. And this is applying to the whole store in total. If you want individual products to not have a quantity, that's when you might have to do it via code. So 
So now I've only got choosing batches and not quantities. Now don't forget to save these variations. I forgot to save it. I did write 12 and 23, but I didn't save it. And so then when I simply published or updated, these didn't save. It went back to the default prices. So if you make any changes to your variations, remember to save these variations first, and then publish or update And you should see that the correct prices show up now from $12. A price, a plus sign where? After the price, it shows on my um, box. If I go back to all my products, well, that's just there, and it's also on chocolate chip. That's their indicator to show that you have more than one variation attached to that product. So it's going to be six or more dollars, possibly, price. <clears throat> yes. So on the checkout page, the, is it seems like the typeface is too big for the yeah. description of the mm -hmm. Let me go there. So on a checkout. Yes, this is one of the this is one of the many things that um, that we have to deal with with the answer. It depends on the theme. Oh. This particular theme has a lot of space for perhaps for the sidebar, maybe too much. So mine's getting cut off like that. It's looking a little odd there. Yeah. So it could be. Choosing a different theme gives you a better result, or if we really like this theme, most likely we'll have to deal with editing some code. So we will touch on that. I've been saying that a few times, edit code, edit code. We will touch a little bit on editing code next time, maybe to fix some of that, because built in, there is not a lot of customization to this plugin or this theme for that case, but the code will let us do what we want with it. Yeah, it's the plain old 2016 theme. <clears throat> so definitely I like to go in and customize a few things. Text is too big there. Uh, a couple of other things. A couple of other things here also like total shipping, total price. That's looking a little odd. We'll be able to edit that via CSS. Question there? I didn't get that the sniffle notes were adding on the notes. If it didn't show up into your cookies, that means maybe you didn't add that as a category. When you edit the snickerdoodle, make sure you add the cookie category. If it's not showing un under cookies, it should, however, at least show up under the shop. So under the shop, we'll have all of our products without any organization. Did you publish it, or is it still a draft? Take 
All right, so the, uh, the big idea then that we've been dealing with is variations. It's going to depend on your product, how it makes sense. But that can be a very powerful thing. We've got one, one particular option on the cookies. We've got them as batches. But if we wanted to get pretty complex, we could make variations to select <coughs> organic ingredients, conventional ingredients. So then that'll be different prices, and that'll be different units, and we can have multiple things to select here. Give me the, give me the, uh, the batch of a dozen, and give me the organic version. So I'm dealing that Texcoco client. Uh, I'm, I'm dealing with them. We're dealing with them because uh, they sell variations, for example, of the soups. 10 ounces, 20 ounces. The really complex one is the combos. You get combos on the website. And from there you can choose, okay, do you, what kind of taco do you want? What kind of uh, flauta do you want? What kind of uh, uh, you know, meat or meat do you want? So then you can have all of these different variations. And on the front end, for the user, it works just fine. You just select an option. But in the back end, for us, it's complex because there could be such a change in price that you have to go through each single one. Now there is batch editing as well. Let me show you that quickly. If I am editing the chocolate chip cookies, I go back to edit, and I am here under the variations, I do have bulk actions. What I mean is, instead of going manually to all of those and changing them, I could select them all, bulk actions, edit. So this doesn't make sense in this case, but if I were to bulk edit them all to all of them, I can change their prices all of them at once, just, just for whatever reason, five. Yeah, that's why I'm saying it doesn't make sense for this one. But for the client that we have, which does a combo, it's the same price for everything in the combo, but we have to say, okay, it's the same price if you have one taco and two flautas. It's the same price if we have two flautas and one taco. So in this case, it doesn't make sense, but if we wanted to, we could do it this, this way. Like, let's say shirts. We have small, medium, and large. They're all going to be the same price, but you needed to change things internally, and they all need to be the same price, so that's a possible way for me to do it. Batch edit. Victor, in your example with the um, different variations on Combo orders and different prices depending on what you need or something like that for each. So did you go for your for your client? Did you go through every permutation that the customer could think of and you came up with like Basically yes and no. Um, the previous web developers that, that were there before us did that. And then when when the client moved with us. Um, we've had to deal with it. So we didn't set it up, and we haven't changed it to a more streamlined version because it is, it is too complex. They did have to. The previous company did have to. They probably billed for it. Had to figure out all the possible ways that someone could do the combo. And then now we have to deal with it. That's why for us, batch edit works really well. 
Um, so yes, in short, you do have to figure out the different ways you're going to sell a product, and if you start to add more and more of the variants and variations, it gets complex. So there's really no way around. Even with WooCommerce, you have to deal with it. With even these other kinds of plugins, it is a complex thing because because we make them complex. And it's all internal and it all works right on Amazon. But now we've got to be the next Amazon and deal with it all. All right, so. Um, yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of ways to do this. And variations could be useful for people or. Or it might not. You might not have to do this at all. So don't worry about it. Make your products as you need them, real or virtual. And we're we're starting to see this, and we're starting to see some of the rough around the edges thing here and there, uh, like design wise and such. Like, huh, why is this underline touching that graphic? That's probably a little bit. Again, depending on the theme, maybe a lot of these rough around the edges things disappear when we choose a different theme. So we'll talk about that later. But we're getting to the end of the day very soon. Any general questions about what we've been talking about so far? <clears throat> Again, hopefully you're practicing this at home uh, so that it becomes more second nature. The more you do this, the more it sticks. But what we'll do now is, just like at the beginning of the day, I gave you uh, a chance for you to resurrect the site. Let me give you, for yourself now, try to archive your site. Follow the handout. Try to archive your site, the site yourself. If you need any help from me, after you try it yourself, give me a call. But we'll wrap up for the day at the moment. Have a little lab time. Try to archive your site before you, before you wrap up. Good morning. <laughs>